treatment of open and closed fractures and their complications. So these are the questions that we are going to discuss. So basing on the classification on the types of fractures, we will talk about uh, possible treatment options that we use. Surgical and non-surgical of course treatment options. Also a part of our class is treatment of complications. Uh, we call it osteomyelitis when infection is involving bone. And gut gunshot fractures are uh, quite specific, so we should pay some attention to this because uh, very different treatment is required. So let's start from some types of fractures that we can see in our practice. Here you can see uh, a fracture which we call hairline fracture or non-displaced fracture. And uh, you can diagnose this, you know already. You can apply some force along the axis of the second ray. You can uh, make an X-ray and see the fracture on it. So uh, practically we don't have any displacement. So the fracture, the bones are on their normal place, uh, but uh, you need to heal this fracture. And uh, the fracture needs to be immobilized. So for this case, we should apply a POP bandage involving the foot and lower set of uh, lower leg. So up to the middle set of, of tibia. That would be enough for fracture and that will prevent fracture from further displacement. Because if the patient will apply some force on this foot, non-displaced fracture can become a displaced fracture. And then quite expensive treatment will be needed. And not, that's not necessary, of course. That's why you will apply a POP a bandage or cast bandage for a period of four weeks. And after that, you remove POP and you allow patient to walk instantly with, of course, some uh, physiotherapy. So you can also do that. The next type of fracture which is very common for child, it is so-called green stick fracture. So for green stick fractures, uh, what is common is that a periosteum is not damaged usually. So if we talk about uh, uh, shift is not uh, uh, usually present, but angular deformity is present. So the main idea for treatment, of course, we need to correct this deformity. For child, uh, some angular deformity is uh, acceptable, but not so big. So this angular deformity should be corrected. And that uh, technique is called a reduction technique. Usually it is done in a closed way. So closed reduction. And you may fix it, immobilize it with uh, a plaster of Paris or polyurethane bandage. Okay, the same period of immobilization, I think, up to four weeks will be enough for this fracture. Uh, if we talk about uh, types of how this uh, fracture can occur, so that's about the force that is applied to the fracture side. So on this uh, part of the uh, left part of the screen, you can see a fracture which is occurred due to the direct force applied, the direct blow into the fracture side can cause a fracture, or indirect force when the patient is falling, landing on hand, and force is transmitted through the bone to the its weakest part. So here the weakest part is the middle of the forearm, and it occurs. So, uh, so two mechanism is that's important for fracture type. Uh, if uh, when patient is falling down the foot is rotated uh, so it can result in so-called a spiral fracture 
basically it is the same fraction as oblique one but with a torsion component okay. so this fracture we have a bigger area of fracture and it can be displayed more severely so uh, here you can see different types of possible displacement so for this case if no uh, shift of bone fragments or we, we don't have a displacement according to its axis so no shortening but as much shift is happening here so we have more and more shortening of this leaf good for one half of the uh, weights of the uh, of its diameter we have this shortening and if it is complete displacement we have even more shortening for this segment of course, when you're treating, you should correct all these types of displacement. If you will or not correct rotational displacement, it means that lag will be turned in one side. So it will be not good for function at all. For shortening, definitely low extremity, it should be corrected because in other way, this, uh, this lag will be shorter and patient can't step on it, can't walk normally, can't run and can't perform any other activity. That's why obviously it should be corrected. So if you have these types of fractures like with many fragments or big fragment, one big fragment, so usually this fracture is called unstable fracture. Transverse fracture, if it is reduced, it can be fixed with a bandage and it won't be displaced. This is another story. For such type of fracture, which is unstable, uh, it is possible that in few days and weeks after your reduction in plaster of Paris, it will be displaced. And usually it will be displaced because it's not stable. There is no firm connection between this and these fragments. And this is a mass of small bones that are not fixing it at all. So more comminution we have, less instability we have. According to the AO classification, those fractures are classified as type C, so the most, the worst fractures. Yes. Uh, fractures with a simple fracture line with no comminution would be the fracture. Uh, it would be the type A. So if we talk about uh, other possibilities, so we may have so-called double fracture, a fracture fluid in uh, two levels, lower level and upper level. It's not very common fracture, but it is considered to be very severe. And we may expect problems with healing for this fracture due to the fact that blood supply of this fragment is, is not good. So we have fracture from this side and fracture from this side. So no blood supply to the bone is present. And due to that fact, usually one fracture is healing well, another is healing longer and may and we may expect non-healing. If you look to the right picture, here you can see a very common example for so-called impacted fracture. So when there is no displacement, but distal fragment, it has a fracture type. Distal bone is impacted into the proximal one. That is because it is spongy bone. So for spongy bone, this, this is possible. So if you have such type of fracture, uh, pr treatment protocol says that we should put patient in bed for six weeks and don't allow him to walk and usually this fracture heals yes in some cases if it won't heal it may be when patient is not mm, keeping the regime he's sitting maybe standing up trying to walk yeah for these cases it become displaced and here we will go to another uh, treatment because Without surgery, it's not easy to fix this fracture. It's actually not possible. 
So even surgery, we can let for good results and it can lead to problems because this area uh, has quite high level of complications, uh, which are septic necrosis, which are delayed union, and that's why uh, surgical treatment, even for, for well done surgical treatment, we can expect some later complications. So the next type of fracture, you see that uh, vertebral body on one side is not fractured, and that is a fractured uh, compression fracture of vertebral body. We call it a wedge compression because anterior part is compressed more than posterior part. So comparing with normal shape of the vertebral body, you see that we have compressed vertebral body. So practically saying non-surgical treatment can give us effect, but the main idea is to put patient in bed uh, without uh, sitting and uh, standing options, like 24 hours in bed. And we're talking about a month to first degree and month to month for the second and third degree. We need three months of bed rest for this fracture. We won't restore the, the height of the vertebral body, but we will. Uh, it will heal. It won't. It won't be compressed more. If patient is trying to stand or sit up, so compression is progressive and can from the second degree, first degree can become second and third degree. That's why main idea of treatment is bed rest. And of course, applying some reclinator can uh, can help in rec in restoring the height of the vertebra. The same area of spongy bone is for calcaneus. It's also easily can be fractured, and uh, if the fracture displacement is not significant, we we'll just immobilize it for uh, significant uh, uh, displacement especially when the Beller angle is changed here. So we need for these cases a surgical treatment. Look at the right side. So type uh, avulsion fracture, Jones fracture. So uh, it's uh, avulsion fracture because here a tendon is attached and sudden contracture of the muscle can cause avulsion fracture. These are also type of avulsion fracture. So actually, uh, they need just immobilization and very, very rare cases for people that are going professional sport. We are doing fixation with a screw, for example, to improve the function. But actually not, not needed for most of the patients. Another type of avulsion fracture, when we have it avulsed uh, ligament with the part of the bone, you see here. And here on this picture, uh, we show you so-called a fracture, which is involving the articular surface. Articular surface. So, uh, if we talk about intraarticular fractures, usually we know that our joint is suffering after fracture healing. So we 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 can talk about. Post-traumatic osteoarthritis can easily be developed. And uh, it depends, of course, on many factors, but the main factor that you can affect, that's a quality of fracture treatment. So, of course, it needs precise reduction. So it should be congruent with no steps between the surfaces. And if we talk about uh, a fracture type, of course, it may be different with partial involvement of articular surface, with full involvement when many bone fragments and totally destroyed articular surface. And maybe a little uh, compression fracture, some part of, of, of articular surface is compressed down. If we talk about periarticular fractures, also we have a good uh, picture here on the right side. So that's fracture which is not involving the joint 
uh, area but it is very close to it and that's a problem because uh, when we apply most of type of treatment we usually immobilize the knee joint uh, except surgical treatment when we apply plate so for this case this patient may start rehabilitation earlier but in most cases uh, it results prolonged fixation in a plaster of Paris or external fixator it results in stiffness in the knee joint so the rehabilitation is prolonged but of course for for joint prognosis is benign because we don't have osteoarthritis in most of this in this case here on this picture we have a bad combination when a uh, head of humerus is dislocated from the shoulder joint and the humeral neck is fractured as so two injuries and the same side it's not good because it's not easy to re repair this so we need to put the head in the joint cavity and we need to fix this fracture so at least we need to apply POP and uh, correct the position of bone fracture uh, it's not easy to reduce two things at once because usually you remember the technique of uh, shoulder dislocation reduction we usually manipulate by the distal part of the humerus but here if you perform some traction rotation adduction abduction you will move at this place at the place of fracture so you won't be able to move the head that's why close reduction is not easy it's possible in some cases it's possible we did it but uh, so for some cases we, we should go to the open surgery so usually for shoulder dislocation we use mode technique here when we pull in applying traction uh, in side direction and this is this can help us and after you reduce the head you can uh, reduce the fracture of humeral neck and then apply POP Okay, next uh, quite common situation is shown on the right picture when there is a fracture which is I would say that is complicated fracture and the reason of why is it complicated means that uh, vital structures in this area are damaged so when artery or nerve is damaged we consider this fracture as complicated fracture So now some general information about types of fractures and how our treatment depends on this. So we know that bone has epiphysis, metaphysis, and diaphysis, which we also divide on three equal thirds. So that would be upper third, that would be middle third, and that will be distal third. For each of these locations, you may think, what is the difference? Is it a fracture of femoral shaft on be just above the knee joint or just below the trochanteric area but the difference is really present because we have muscles that are attached to these areas and each type of fracture has its own type of displacement mostly for opposite fractures we have such kind of displacement when proximal fragment is moved anteriorly and laterally due to the muscles that are attached to the lesser trochanter and for supra uh, condylar fracture we may have common displacement when distal fragment goes to the posterior side and cause angulation angle which is open to the anterior side so if you know common types of displacement for particular fractures so you can better develop and perform a reduction for this fracture so your aim is to reduce all types of displacement and watching at the x-ray you may see that uh, two views are needed 
So that is a view from the side, called lateral view. That is AP view. So this picture nicely show you how uh, AP and lateral view can sh can show you different types of displacement. This is a fracture, no displacement. You, we are sure because we look at lateral view, no displacement, AP view, no displacement. Okay. But look here. You will look at lateral view, you may see that the fracture is not displaced. But when you look at the AP view, you will see that we have here lateral displacement of distal fragment. Here is vice versa. AP view will show you non-displaced fracture. And you may see, oh, it's okay. Just put a bandage, POP bandage, and that's okay. But no, we have full displacement if you look from the side. So lateral view can show you more information. The same on the fourth uh, slide, you can see both posterior displacement and lateral displacement together. Okay. Uh, you see the displacement may be full displacement, when full loss of contact between both fragments and partial displacement here. So if you have full displacement like that, mm, that may be a problem. No contact means that there may be some soft tissues between these fragments and uh, this fracture will never heal. So does, I don't want to say that it uh, may heal in the wrong position. Yes, it may heal in the wrong position, but more chances for this fracture that it will heal, it will never heal. Uh, so that's why uh, we consider that there are types of displacement which is acceptable and which is not acceptable. So please uh, look at this picture for transverse fracture. The transverse fracture, as we mentioned before, they are stable. So if a partial displacement is present here, no shortening is here. So if you don't have angular deformity, the position is acceptable. This will heal and patient will have good function. But look, if you have full displacement here, there will be a shortening. And then the knee will be shorter and patient will limp due to that fact. So that this type of displacement is considered to be not acceptable and should be corrected in any way. The same about here, oblique fracture type. You see that the oblique fracture type is unstable fracture, yes, and this distal fragment can sleep along it, and even partial displacement can cause a shortening, and that should be corrected. And next type of uh, displacement, which should be corrected also, very important to correct it, is angulation. So the angle may be open to the lateral side, maybe open to the anterior side, uh, and uh, that will result in quite significant lo loss of function. So that should be corrected always. And uh, these types of displacement together with the rotational one is considered to be unacceptable. So how to diagnose a rotational displacement? It's not easy to do that. When you look at X-ray, you see here, a rotational displacement is present. But you may look at the X-ray and say, the fracture, which is not displaced. Uh, that is because a wrong picture was made. To see the displacement, you need to see where, how, where the femoral head and neck is oriented to and where the knee joint is oriented to and only then you can see that there is a displacement yes know that if you look you see the knee joint and patella is looking aside and it should look anterior yes so that would be a rotational displacement and here ne next uh for, uh, options for uh, the, for classifying, we may talk about fracture which is open, and 
a little bit later we'll talk about treatment specific treatment for open fractures but look the wound may be a small wound minimal wound maybe a wound which is made by a bone fragment which is piercing the skin and tissue and going out or maybe the wound which is made by the object which is broken the skin other tissues and come into the bone and cause the fracture of the bone of course for this case contamination with infection will be more more severe so now let's talk about main principles of fracture treatment so as i told you before the fracture needs to be immobilized if the fracture is not immobilized and bone fragments are moving every second every minute first of all it's very painful for your patient second the patient may have or uh, may got some complications and the most uh, common complication is when the closed fracture becomes open we don't need that because the treatment become be, will become more prolonged and more expensive uh, another problem may happens when fracture which not which is not fixed can cause the damage of soft tissues and particularly vessels and nerves that's why immobilization should be performed as, as soon as possible starting from the place of accident okay and after that you shouldn't remove it so you may just change you may change transport splint to a plaster bandage in the hospital or to a plate or nail inside but all time during the treatment the fracture should be immobilized if you remove bandage or you remove the splint you should prevent movement of the limb in this moment also we may use analgetics we should use analgetics and of course it depends from the severity of the fracture for severe fractures we may use narcotics for non-severe we may use on sites mostly those inside that have a more analgetic effect okay not antipyretic effect not uh, uh, anti-inflammatory but a group of sites as dexalgene for example uh, ketoprofen dexketoprofen which has very high activity like analgetic activity so also you should stop the bleeding if it is open fracture Mm. open fracture may be of different grade and we have special classification for this we'll talk about it later and also we should put some ice decrease the swelling of the limb and take this patient as soon as possible to the nearest hospital nearest hospital not to the capital not to the uh out to the other country but to nearest hospital where where is the surgeon the orthopedic surgeon or, or maybe surgeon that can provide first medical aid and specialized medical aid so uh, how to immobilize fracture correctly that's a very important point because um you may, you may think that it's, you just need to put it on the arm and bend it with many bandages and that's okay no, it is not. And there are special rules that you should know. One of the rules is that the splint should be applied in physiological position. So for elbow joint, it's 90 degree of flexion and the position between uh, pronation and supination. Also, we should apply some soft paddings. Gauss, maybe a few layers you can put here why is it so swelling is increasing you bend it very tightly and in some time maybe in one hour in a few hours this wires may damage the skin can cause ulceration and pressing that's why to prevent this we need good soft padding to protect soft tissues second next principle let's say fractures here yes so 
you should not bend bench yeah very tight you should do it distally and you should do it proximal uh because those cases when the bandage is bended just on the fracture side and and distally we don't have or proximal we don't have bandage so it will result in very poor mobilization it will it may result in more severe pain and even can cause the displacing of a bone fragment so that's why you should uh, fix it distally and proximally from the fracture side and we should immobilize uh, the joint as well so uh, two nearest joints should be fixed for forearm it is a wrist joint and it is elbow joint when humerus is fractured we apply splint starting from the scapula on the opposite side it goes on posterior side of arm fixing shoulder joint and fixing elbow joint that's how you can immobilize it better. If we talk about no splints available, you can use any wood material, any board or umbrella, but you may use, you may apply splint, a uh, sling. So hanging sling is also a fix to this fracture. Uh, you see, the splints are universal. They can be used for lower extremity, for upper extremity, posteriorly, laterally, medially, in different locations. So, and this another type of splint, so called Dietrich Spinning Splint. So, it has several parts a part for foot, a medial part, lateral part, which I apply together. And that is a traction splint, so actually, you can apply some force. So, due to that, this wooden board is fixed to the hood. And we have a rope and a stick. Twisting with the stick can move this board and can cause some traction. So when this traction is applied, so usually movement at the fracture side not, uh, are not present. No movement, less pain, less chances to damage some soft tissues and vessels, nerves surrounding the bone. So now we'll talk about this general classification of our possible treatment options. And you see we may divide in two parts, non-surgical treatment and surgical treatment. So uh, if you say that uh, we should give some painkillers and calcium, that's important, but much more important to immobilize the fracture. And uh, that is actually plaster of Paris bandages, but you can immobilize the fracture also by means of continuous skeletal traction. You should choose one option or another option. And your choice is based on the type of the fracture, so actually on the diagnosis, because for some fractures, stable fractures. You may reduce it, you may put a PLT. For other fractures which are not stable, you should apply continuous skeletal traction if you decide to treat your patient in non-surgical way, of course. Also, we are talking about manual reduction. So reduction can be performed before you apply PLP, or you may, uh, if you use functional method of treatment by skeletal traction, you may use the skeletal traction to reduce the fracture. So you apply skeletal traction and then every day you're making corrections and by this you can reduce the fracture. And if you go about operative treatment methods, we put inside a device which is fixing bone fragment. This may be plate, this may be intermediary nail. We have some other options, so next slide we'll talk about this. But we have another option for operative treatment. We call it external fixator. And uh, this is the case when you don't put this device inside of the patient's body. You put it outside, but just some screws are driven into the bone. Okay, so now 
uh, let's talk about first principle of, of manual reduction. So uh, actually what should you do? You should do it in three steps. First step, you, you apply force along the axis of the point. That's to relax the muscles and to correct the shortening. Second, you are doing actually the reduction. So if you have fracture with angulation, you correct angulation, you correct rotation. Uh, you may press on both sides to correct the shift. But in most cases, when you apply axial traction, you reduce the shift. And also you can uh, correct uh, angulation as well. And you're keeping with your arms, uh, uh, with your hands, you're keeping this in the correct position. And you're applying a plaster of Paris because it needs, fracture needs to be heal, uh, healed. And it needs, uh, I think, starting from three weeks till maybe a few months, depending on which fracture type is. So all this time the fracture should be fixed. So that's an example of a wrist fracture. We call it a collis fracture. Please look here. We have a bayonet deformity, like a bayonet, and uh, we have also deformity in this plane as well. So uh, the first step is we apply traction. We're taking the patient's hand and we apply traction along the axis of this point. Then we are making correction at the fracture site. We usually use the edge of table. So we put patient's arm on the edge of table. And after some period of traction, a few minutes, we are making flexion and ulnar deviation to this fracture. And then we apply POP. So we're keeping in the corrected position with our hands until the POP will, will harden. After that, we consider that our work is done. We need to make an X-ray, of course, to see how good our work is done. But actually, if everything is correct, correct, so you, you your patient go home and. Uh, he is waiting until the fracture will heal. So sometimes uh, it's not easy to perform reduction, and we may use special apparatus for this. So that's actually apparatus by Sokolovsky. He was invented this device. Maybe in your countries you have another uh, physicians or surgeons that invented a similar device. It's very common. Uh, when, when, uh, be, because the problem of reduction uh, happens in, uh, it stands in front of every surgeon, and sometimes he is alone, he needs help, or sometimes it's not easy to reduce this. That's why such devices were invented. So, this part of the distal humerus is fixed down, and fingers are fixed in this part. So. Uh, sli uh, gradually we can turn in this mechanism, we can pull it millimeter by millimeter and cause a reduction to both sides. Allow you to, don't allow you to make something with it. So usually uh, the swelling is increasing and the plaster of Paris can compress this area. When it is doing so, so uh, it can uh, result in ischemic changes of the soft tissue. Practically, what we do, we uh, when we apply a secular bandage, we uh, leave distal part of the foot fingers, like here. Yeah. So we, we leave them open. So you can check this. You can control blood supply if this part is warm. If uh, this part is uh, sensation is present, and it's not pale, it's not dark, uh, pink color, and uh, you can ask patient to move his fingers. If all these things are possible, so you know that uh, the blood flow is not interrupted. Opposite side, you you should cut this bandage, release it, or you may even remove it. So if patients have it. It's not 
be very careful with secular bandages when these bandages are very uh, dangerous thing if you don't care about it semi-secular bandage don't have this problem but it has not so good uh, fixation so that's why we usually check how this bandage is fixing the fracture and usually make it band bandage tightening every day uh, when the swelling is decreasing after swelling has decreased we can change this bandage to the second just bending some bandages around it so also we can use this after surgeries when surgery was done and we need to protect this tissue like you fixed a fracture not with a plate by with some KYs or screws just only yeah? so screws are not enough so we need additional a POP to immobilize that site so these bandages we usually use in our practice we put them in water one two minutes and then we are uh, bandaging making any type of those repair shown you before and that's how it looks like on the patient a semi-secular bandage it's banded with elastic bandages uh, around it and secular bandage on the forearm and also the way how we can remove this bandage when uh, it's not needed when we have special scissors for POP bandages and we have some electric instrument we can cut also along the forearm. So now let's talk about functional method of treatment and a functional method of treatment means that uh, joints are not uh, immobilized and that will give us good possibilities because there is no stiffness in the joint so usually we use uh, traction and different types of traction are present here so skeletal traction means when we put KYs through the bone uh, we may use glue or adhesive traction to the skin we may use link traction so that's how it looks like usually we see the patient which is uh, in bed and the system of skeletal traction is applied so the main idea is to make a pressure or along the axis of extremity so for this purpose we usually put a k-wire through the bone and we take a sterile k-wire we clean the skin with aseptic solutions and we make anesthesia in the area of olecranon here we can use lidocaine solution and then when we give anesthesia we have a drill and we are putting the KY through the olecranon it is fixed in the tension bow and then we have a rope that goes through the system of pulleys and we have a weight so the actual the weight is applied along the axis of the humeral bone look here we have an x-ray it shows us the x-ray the fracture and how it is displayed so just pulling along the axis can help in the reduction because this bone will align by themselves but we have some options we can apply additional slings here it will pull one fragment like this fragment to this direction and can correct the position of fragment Additionally, to prevent rotation, we can apply a skin traction for forearm, which goes and prevent rotation, because rotation will cause rotation, particularly in the fracture site. And that would be not good for fracture healing. It's another way how the system may apply it. So also, the traction is applied through the olecranon. That's mostly for fractures of the uh, glenoid cavity and for lower extremity we have two places we can put we can put it through the supracondylary region but in most of the cases we do it through the tibial tuberosity and also through the calcaneus so calcaneus is for fractures of tibia like this also we have a tension bow we have a rope and a weight 
and we have some side links. One is pulling this side, another is pulling this side. Note this is the fracture X-ray, and you see the type of displacement. Actually, it means this fragment to be moved to this side and this fragment to this side. So this correction can be done by means of this skeletal traction system. Okay. So it has advantages because it's cheap, it's simple, you can apply it within a few minutes. Uh, it's not painful, just because you give general anesthesia and you put in the KY, so actually most of patients can stand it. Uh, you don't open the fracture site, you're not making surgery, you don't have infection here, you don't have problems here. So the only problem is time. So the patient is attached to bed. And if we talk about this fracture, we know that we need three months, right? So we can keep patient in bed for one month until the soft callus, soft fracture callus will happen here. After that, we can very gently we can remove all this system and apply POP. Because totally we need three months, yes. So one month by skeletal traction and two months in POP. That's a way how you can treat this fracture without surgery. Okay, surgery, of course, it's more beneficial because patient can can is not attached to bed and can start rehabilitation just maybe in a few days after surgery. So, but there, there are cases, there are some cases that you can't do surgery, you can use this method, so you, you need to know this. And as I told you, it's quite effective because most of types of placement you can correct by me. So here again, picture where places where we can put k -wise. So olecranum, tibial tuberosity, calcaneus. These are the main places. So if we talk about uh, surgical treatment, because previous technique those apply surgical, uh, apply skeletal traction is a surgical procedure, but overall it's considered to be non-surgical treatment. Surgical treatment actually it's incisions and inserting some implants that are fixed in fracture site. So uh, you see different options that we can do. So close reduction, this is a reduction of bone fragments without incisions, close. Open reduction, if you're making incision and you're putting this part on their place. Internal fracture fixation, means that you put some implants like plates, intramedullary nails inside. That is uh, internal fixation. And external fixation means that you apply fixators externally, so not in the fracture. Now I will show you some pictures showing you how to do that. But uh, on this slide you can see which advantages and which disadvantages uh, internal fixation can have. Of course, we have mentioned about early rehabilitation, but of course after every surgery there is some percentage of, of uh, infection complications, problems with healing, problems with implant, and so on and so on. So that you should remember about that. Practically all indications are divided on two big categories. One is indication for surgery when surgery should be done in all cases, otherwise the fracture won't heal. We have these specific locations like fractures which are intraarticular, remember, involving articular surface, which are displaced. Here we need precise reduction, that's why intraarticular fracture uh, is considered to be uh very strong indication uh fractures like femoral neck uh scaphoid bones talus they also need of uh, osteosynthesis in first day and that will 
increase chances for fracture to heal. Also, some fractures uh, can be treated in both ways, like tibial shaft fracture, femoral shaft fracture, but the surgery gives you advantages. Your patient may be rehabilitated early. So that will be a relative indication for surgery. So main implants that can be used. K wires, it's a Kirchner wires, and a thin wires that are made of stainless steel. They are bi-inert material. They may be of different diameters, starting from one millimeter, 1.5, 1.6, 2.0, even 3.0 millimeters, and so on. So usually we use K wires 1.5, 1.6 millimeters in diameter. Screws, also they can go in different types. For next slide, you'll, you'll see this. Different plates that are combined with screws, intramedullary nails, and what is new nowadays, biodegradable devices. Still, we have already them, but still are on development. So you may see that screws may go, first of all, there are some standard diameters. 0 0.5, 3.5, 2.7, 2.0. These are standard diameters that we use in our practice. We may use cortical screws like here, or we may use spongy screws. The thread is different because the quality and uh, uh, the structure of the cortical bone and uh, cancellous bone is different. Uh, cancellous bone uh, it is not so strong and we need the thread which is bigger also we may have a fully threaded screw and we may have a partially threaded screw okay. that's uh, important for some types of fractures when we need to compress two bone fragments together so an example how the screw can be used. See, oblique fracture line. Using leg screw, so-called leg screw, you can compress the fracture line together and fix it. Of course, for shaft fracture, it's not enough, so you need to apply POP, or you may apply a plate. Uh, condyles may be fixed with screws as well, in such manner. Tibial has the C fractured also a few screws, but I say combined with plaster pen. If we talk about K wires, mostly we use them to fix uh, hand fractures, phalanges, metacarpal bone. We may use them for shaft uh, of thin bones like clavicle, like ulna in child or radius. We may use a bundle of K wires. It's not common technique, but it it, it is possible. Mostly we use this. To perform the technique introduced by Weber, to introduce just to introduce two K wires and a wire circlage, which is uh, fixed to the end of this uh, K wire. So this technique uh, is used for all cranial fractures, and as on this picture, or for fractures of patella. So, what about screw, uh, what about plates? Of course, plates need to be fixed with screws, and this is an example how comminuted fracture can be fixed in a bridge technique. Two screws are inserted above it and can be inserted below it. So this fracture is immobilized, and despite the many fractures, it will heal like in a one big callus. You see that fracture uh, uh, locations are different, and uh, sometimes when it is close to the joint, we can't put a straight plate. So straight plate can be used only in the shaft area. Uh, those areas that are close to the joint, like close to the knee joint, a proximal lateral plate is used to fix tibial fracture.
this is the distal part uh, of the tibia can be used this t-shaped plate can be used for distal part of rudder so anatomically pear-shaped plates it's a good advance in treatment because uh, it can provide better fixation and anatomical contouring and uh, don't uh, uh, it have some, some soft tissues around this and uh, ligaments and tendons so they can work fine if this plate is applied you also can use a reconstruction plate when the plate is bended in different directions in axial, uh, uh, in uh, on site or from the anterior to posterior side you can bend this so you can do it uh, according to the anatomy uh, what about our university we had such uh, plate that was developed here which is fixing a fracture in the two planes so dynamic plate by Roblenik introduced professor Roblenik introduced this plate and it's fixing the screws are inserted in one plane and in another plane very good fixation different locations can be fixed sharp fractures close to the joint um, there, there are some disadvantages with problems with removal but fixation is very good the middle of this plate uh, but most of the plate that we use nowadays they are divided in two groups that's dynamic compression plates and locking compression plates so dynamic compression plates are present here on this field on this slide so they have particularly hole which is oval which is with a slope so when you're inserting a screw the screw is sliding according to the slope and is moving the fracture fractured bone to one side and plate is moving to another side that's just for a millimeter or two but that is a very important uh, point because it can make bone fragments closer yes so uh, as less as uh, as small as possible this gap should be most uh, if we talk about optimal size of the fracture gap we're talking about 150 to 100 uh, micrometer in these cases if stable fixation is was done interfragmentary compression screw was inserted no movement absolute stability we can expect the fracture will heal uh, in a uh, direct way so direct ingrow osteons from one bone fragment into another if there is some movement in this area the fracture may be healing may be delayed and for relative stability we're expecting fracture healing with a colored stimulation which is surrounding this color which is surrounding bone fragment that's another type of of uh, fracture healing so you see before this plate a special tensioning device was introduced when uh, it helps to insert these uh, screws and compress them but now we can use this gcp plate which is actually dynamic compression plate uh, we have another plate which we use now it was a new plate it was invented by 20 22 23 years ago so we're talking about uh, uh holes which are also oval but they are combination holes so first is the same hole as it was in dynamic compression plate introducing the screw like that can cause movement of the plate and can cause compression of the fracture but another part of the hole has a thread and here we need special screw which has a thread on, the, on its head so in setting it you see it can fix very well screw head to the, bow, to the plate and of course when this screw is inserted in the bone the fixation is much better than previous one so we're talking about 
angular stability it's uh, is very good for bone with a poor quality osteoporotic bone and for those areas which are uh, surrounding the hip joint with the um, cancellous bone so for these areas we can insert the screws in different directions and that will help us in the good fixation you may see on the slide how it is used the distal part different directions and even if bone is of poor quality the fixation is good so these screws can be inserted in a monocortical way or it may be inserted through both cortical layers this slide shows us some developments of our university uh, it is polymeric material but this is a material which is not uh, resorbable so that was the early stage of use of polymeric material and we actually uh, use this for many locations tibial fractures femoral fractures uh, humeral fractures were pleased with these arrows were on that fractures the bolts pins were used of course external fixate uh, uh, of course a plaster of paris was used for external fixation because just screw is not enough but uh, this is considered to be a bio inert material many years uh, present in the human body no allergic reactions no any other reaction quite safe material and we have another material which is polyglycolic acid uh, we also develop some devices of it and you see uh, screws uh, pins conical pins that were uh, invented and used we perform surgeries of uh, fractures of malleolus olecranon fractures pulmonary screw uh, fractures of tibial condyles in other locations and uh, the advantage of this is that they completely are resorbable in the human body and after the surgery you don't need to make another surgery to remove it that's of course advantage now we have a biodegradable devices of new generation uh, which is made of polyglycolic acid and polylactic acid cool polymer and also we have some experience in using of these devices in our community so these are pins that are inserted in the uh, fractured foot and, uh, after after six months uh, small pins screws after two years they are usually resolved and are replaced with the soft tissue so here you can see uh, intermediary nails now we have modern generation of these nails which uh, which are locking in proximal part and distal part and uh, this can be used for different bones uh, femoral, femoral sharp fractures tibial fractures uh, femoral fractures all these locations are treated by using this nail the technique is minimal invasive as when we insert a nail we make a small incision only in the place of its insertion the fracture site is usually not open and that prevent infection development improve fracture healing so intermediary nails are used as a hammer a nail device also so that's uh, another uh, quite common surgery that we do for all people and some intermediary nails that were developed in our department also were used polyamide 12 to fill windows here for fixing the screws so here it looks like empty space but the fact is that polymeric device is used that was uh, 20 30, 30 years ago but uh, still since that time maybe a few thousands of people were operated by using these nails this polymeric medium and few words about external fixator and then we'll end our lecture soon so 
uh, frames developed by Elizaro and so called Elizaro frame. Uh, frame is located outside of the body and K wires go through the bone. So for Elizaro frame, we have many uh, indications so open fracture, delayed healing, non healing osteomyelitis are indications of this frame. Many devices were developed based on his device. So you may see we have Kaunsberg device, Kudushauri device, Kaunsberg is secular, Kudushauri is secular, Kachenko device, which is so proud. We have uh, a device for which allows movement in the joint, local organization. But one of the basic fixators was so called. Hoffman Wagner axonal fixator, and now modern devices are made based on him. So, what it has? It has shunt screws that are driven into the bone. It has a clamp which is fixing these screws, and we have a rod, rod or plant or plate, which are fixing in, in this part and this part together. So, very simple thing. Uh, practically speaking, this part is inpatient only the patient's body all this part is around it that's uh, why we say that this is a external fixate okay. so different modifications of external fixator you can see with the delta frame for for ankle joint it can be used combination of screws and and wires uh k wires so we call it a hybrid device and the clinical case shows you uh, for uh, a patient who has polytrauma when these devices were used to fix three fractures okay, so devices were invented by Kostyuk, uh, so Ukrainian orthopedic surgeon from Kyiv and we have quite good device and quite good technique AO external fixators they go with special sets and they you can make a frame according to your need. You can you make a unilateral plate or bilateral plate, delta system as well. Uh, you see for ankle joint we need to fix it as well with one uh, screw. You can use a span devices through the joint when joint is involved and fractured. 